Hi all, welcome to part 11 combinational circuit. So mainly uh, we are seeing different uh, combinational circuit implementation that add a magnitude to the com comparators. So these are all the main circuits we've seen so far. Now let's see another important combinational circuit called uh, decoders. Right. Let's see what it is. So this is something familiar to you. Different different uh, um, situations you come across where you go on through this decoder. We will see that. So discrete quantities of information are typically represented in digital in, uh, system by binary codes. You know B C D accessory codes. So like the different coding technique we know, right? So or simply normal binary. So why we have to encode something? So when when some information you are assigning some codes, that process is called encoding. And the opposite thing, from the coded information, you are trying to retrieve the original data, so that is decoding. This encoding and decoding we will typically use in many, many situations in computer uh, science networking everywhere, right? We will see that. A binary code uh, of n bits is capable of representing some 2 power n distinct elements of uh, coded information. Using, you know, n, using n bits, you can uh, write how many codes, right? 2 power n co codes are possible in, in, in binary, no, in normal binary using three bits some um, eight combinations are possible right so that about it so a decoder is a combination circuit that convert the binary information from n input lines to a maximum of two power n unique uh, output line so typically we call it as a we will see what it is n to m line decoder where n is the number of bits uh, given as input to the decoder and m is the number of bits uh, number of output lines of the decoder. So typically this m is less than or equal to 2 power n depending on uh, what is our purpose. We will see that. Yeah. Let's see this decoder. We Let's understand it with a very simple example. Uh, one thing I can tell you mm, say a 2 by 4 decoder. Uh, let's see that. So what is happening here is the circuit is something like uh, so this is my 2 by 4 decoder so just like a 2 line to two, 4 line decoder something like that All right 2 by 4 decoder so what is happening is some 2 input lines will come and there is 4 output line right so to visualize it uh, let me take uh, an analog it's just an analog you can assume this decoder say like a receptionist and what this uh, uh, receptionist is doing is when somebody is coming say with a token of two bits so th that about it so two bits uh, this person is having say uh, let me call it as input to zero input to one sometimes the zero and one like that we denote so by default zero, uh, zero is a low, least significant bit and this is the msb bit so two bits are coming right and uh, mm, the if uh, if that person is coming with the two bits like a zero one what does it mean? 0, 1 means 1. I mean, so here these lines are directing that particular person to say different departments. Say uh, department 0, department 1, department 2, department 3, something like that. So whenever a person is coming with a token, uh, uh, say the input of the decoder as 0, 1, this receptionist is uh, what is by simply observing the token, that person is directing this, uh, this uh, the one having this token to the particular concern department say 0 1 uh, when you decode it this corresponds to 0 1 is 1 right so th this uh, person will be directed towards this one so in in, in other ways uh, this you will denote by so uh, what i can tell you is so this is a case with the 0 1 now le le let me take a different example so suppose a person is coming with uh, some some input like Uh, is coming with the one one and when you uh, I mean you, you know this right so zero 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 one one zero one one so these are all different possibilities for your um, input line so let me write like this input line one and input line zero and uh, what is the output so that is my question whether the output output there are four output d0 is there let me write like d3 d2 d1 d0 so input to the possibilities are like zero 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 one 1 0 and 1 1 so whenever somebody is coming with the 0 0 as an input so wh what should happen so he has to be directed to department 0 I, he should not be directed to any of the other department right so that is the meaning similarly when somebody is coming like this he should be directed to department 1 
and the other output line should be zero means that he is not supposed to go there in this analogy okay so here it is like a zero one zero zero here it is like one d three is one right because one one is three zero 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 so that is what is happened here so the this output line will give you a one and here and all it will show you zero that means you you are supposed to take that output line the last output line d3 so that is going to lead you to that so something like that so some uh, coded information this uh, uh, 0 0 0 1 1 0 these things are actually um, some somebody done this encoding right the one who is coming with the token is saying that this is the encoding of the token i am having so that coded information he is having now the circuit is decoding it decoding it and it is understanding that this is 1 1 that corresponds to department d3 that is how the encoding is done right so accordingly i am decoding so this is my requirement so from the center po point of view this one one means that this is d3 and re receptionist should also decode it that way so accordingly he has to re direct that person towards department 3 something okay so th this is just an analogy we may see more practical examples of this decoder one thing i can tell you is in you know in the computer i mean in cpu design uh, typically we have a uh, encoding just like uh, you know uh, when you write a high level language program and you know high level language program typically you will convert it into something called assembly language right assembly language program and uh, you know how this assembly language uh, le let me take an example of this uh, yeah so high level language you may be writing like a c equal to a plus b something like this and when it comes to assembly language typically you write depending on the architecture you are using whether it is 8 8 6 8 5 um, intel i3 i7 whatever thing whatever thing you are having and that architecture is having something called instruction set architecture of it uh, maybe you are parallel studying this computer organization this sum or next sum i don't know but anyways you may have the, some basic idea of it right so every uh, computer will have some instruction set architecture the set of all instructions that the computer can support that's all so uh, using that it will convert like uh, for example uh, typically we write like a move uh, inside the cpu we have i don't know if you are you knowing this uh, computer organization this will be very easy for you if you don't know just keep this example at this point and after understanding come back i will try uh, to explain right now but anyways so typically inside the cpu we have the regi registers and in i am trying to move the content of the um, say this a is a memory variable i am trying to move it to register r1 and similarly, I am trying to move this B to some uh, R2. Why I am moving content from the mem memory to register? Because once I get the information inside the register, the pro I, uh, it is within me, right? The C register is a memory inside the CPU. So that I can do this uh, operation very faster, right? Now, finally, I will do something like add uh, this R1 and R2. And uh, now, so suppose uh, this mean like, so what I mean here is mm, just R1, the memory content of location a i am moving similarly here i mean like r2 i am content in the memory location identified by b so here let it be like r1 is equal to r1 plus r2 so how this operation is done in the direction of the data transfer everything is actually architecture de dependent i am simply assuming a hypothetical processor okay it's not specific to any processor simply a hypothetical processor i am assuming I, in my own way and accordingly i am explaining this to you okay some hypothetical cpu i assumed and in that cpu they say this is the way it is doing okay <laughs> it may not exist okay just for understanding the concept uh, finally you can uh, do one more move operation where the content uh, uh, can be uh, it's available in r1 it can be moved to say c not uh, so uh, what is my requirement i need the result in c c is equal to r1 so that what will happen in the memory location identified by the location rc memory identified by the location uh, variable c so this uh, content of r1 is moved something like that so typically this is what the user wants to do and uh, you know in between uh, there is something called the compilation uh, these things will be there right? when you write a high level language program this is just a statement i taken from your high level language so it's just a fragment and it's not a complete program there are many things missing right so i'm just explaining uh, as uh, you see an example that's all so there will be compiler typically this compiler will convert this for you and now from this point uh, there is typically another uh, person involved we call it as an assembler and this assembler will do something for you like it will convert this each of this um, assembly language instruction to some encoding it will give because next uh, i need something in the form of zeros and ones so when you are writing something in the form of zeros and ones the cpu is supposed to understand what you mean by it right so how this encoding is done 
let me again um, hypothetically assume uh, something like a, uh, so i have a table and the table is containing informations like this so uh, what is the thing i, I need different operations like uh, the first operation is say mover um, i need another operation say add subtract multiply i'm simply writing <laughs> division uh, some logarithm i i want to implement say what else uh, some uh, left shift operation i want to implement some right shift operation i want to implement i'm randomly writing something okay whichever coming into my mind accordingly i'm writing so let the n um, uh, the codes correspond to move uh, add i'm assigning uh, them in sequence like this some three bits i am using because i have some um eight different uh, operations in hand so accordingly if i have i i am having some uh, more than eight uh, uh, instruction set uh, if this is my instruction set architecture i assume so this is my instruction set architecture it is currently only this many operations say for the time being you assume but typically it is like it's a very bigger set okay accordingly you have to choose a number of bits everything so here as, as a smaller example i it's enough for me uh, to have uh, some eight bits i mean three bits using that eight combinations are fine yeah that about it now what i need is some register uh, mapping also i need so let me take uh, so how many registers i am using say r0 r1 r2 and r3 suppose i am having only three uh, four registers so that i can assign numbers like 00 01 10 11 see this is a way i am assigning uh, some binary to the registers also so this is how i done now accordingly how can i do this mapping <coughs> So let me just do like this. Now this memory variables are also involved, right? <laughs> so that is another thing. Say in your uh, main memory, suppose uh, let me write it that also here. All these are typical hypothetical things. So I have a RAM, right? Main memory RAM. I'm just going beyond this digital, but just for a, a giving you a feel of what is this decoder, encoder, etc. I'm taking this example. This RAM is suppose containing some. Um, there are some. This is the first location, second location, maybe four locations are enough for the time being, okay. <laughs> so actually, you know, 2 GB RAM like that we are having, right. So 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, 1, 0, 1, 1. So these are all the addresses of, you know, main memory, location, address. So e this location is identified by 0, 0 like that. Let me say this location corresponds to, this is your A, location A. And I am storing some value 10 into that location and this is your location B. And here I have a 20. So that in C I need 30. So that is my requirement. Whether I am getting that 30 or not, that is after execution. Okay, so this is my requirement. And if that is the case, let me see uh, everything I have that enco encoding with me. Now what I am doing is just a hypothetical thing. Again, keep in mind. So move. Just look at this table. Maybe uh, opcode table. We typically call it as the opta and all. Okay, so that is a technical name. Opcode table. And from where this... Uh, first I will see what is this move. So this 3 0 corresponds to move right <coughs> i just taken its binary and what is this r1 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 is 0 1 from uh, from here i am getting okay r1 is 0 1 and uh, see r1 okay this is my move and finally this um, uh, a is the next thing and the address of a is 0 1 so i know that uh, the first uh, first three bits are for opcode then operand one operand two accordingly the cpu will interpret it so there is a different thing now whether it is registered whether it is memory what is addressing mode there are many other information that is added accordingly this is something very very simple way i'm taking so it's not complete actually many things are to be added right now what is the uh, next instruction uh, next instruction is like uh, mm, what is this so this is the first instruction this is the second instruction move again so this 0, 0, 0 I taken uh, and now this is R2, see R2 I am using. So R2 is actually 1, 0 and then I, I need B. So B is, uh, address of B is also on 0, so like that. Now let me take the uh, third instruction, so what is it? See this is what I am interested, that is my add, add instruction, the opcode is like a 0, 0, 1 and opcode 1, um, Operand 1 is R1, R1 is um, 0, 1 and R2 is 1, 0. Both are registers, fine. So how, you may be wondering like whether it is memory or register, how it will understand. That is also there, some additional information will be there. Okay, and finally, uh, we have the last instruction. Uh, what is it? Uh, this one. Again, move 0, 0, 0. 
uh, that that location is C C is what C is one one and where I need the content of zero one register R one like that. So I am just taking like this. So this is a typical encoding process, right? So this is something we will explore next. So we started with the decoding because that is the order it is explained in textbooks. That is why I started like that. So this encoding is to be done first. So this is something from the CP point of view it will be done by your assembler. Assembler is doing this for you. And once this encoded, uh, so this is what typically uh, we call as the, uh, this whole thing we call like, a, right. This is something called object to code, right? Object to code, uh, which is in the form of zeros and ones. Now you understood a very, very important concept in computer science. It's high, how this high-level language is being translated to the zeros and ones. The compiler will do high-level lang language to assembly language translation, and the assembler is another uh, program, system program that will do this translation for you. You will study it, or you may be studying parallelly. I don't know exactly. So that is why I explained all those things in a crystal clear way. So hope it is clear right now, right? So this is your object to code, and now it is ready for. Now, how this CPU is taking this binary and it is going to execute for you. So, that is where the decoder is being used. But to explain that, I was supposed to explain the encoder also. So, what will happen? Let's uh, uh, let's see. So, let's uh, explore this line first. So, how the execution of this particular line is happening. Okay. And you know this is a code correspond to that line. So, this is a code. Let me highlight it in the next page. So, what is it? 0, 0, 001, 0, 001. 0, 001. So what I am having with me is uh, 0, 0, 001, 0, 001, 0, 001, right. So now something like this is coming to the CPU. So this is coming to the CPU, right. Now what the CPU has to do? So typically this is uh, something like an instruction, right? So this is uh, each uh, line of this object code is what you can call as a instruction to the CPU. So whenever such an instruction is coming to the CPU, so typically it will be stored in something called an instruction register inside the CPU. And from this instruction register, it, it, it will be knowing, right? So how many bits are for what like that. So in, in our example, we taken like uh, this uh, uh, first three bits we assumed for our... Uh, operation for indicating the operation we can call it as the opcode field and this is the operand 1 and this is the operand 2 like that it is coming so that the system will be knowing and accordingly it will explore how many bits are there for the opcode that many bits and then this cpu will give this opcode uh, to something called a instruction decoder so this is where the decoder first level of decoding is happening uh, so let me call it as the instruction decoder instruction decoder so typically instruction decoder will do the decoding of everything but i am just exploring this part only right so in general you have to implement a decoder that that has to take the whole thing that splitting and for everything it is to be done so for the time being i assume that suppose the cpu is taking this and giving to this so it is up to the implementation so this three bits is given to the instruction decoder so now i the decoder will be what kind of a decoder you can guess it right so using three bit it has to decode so it it should be a uh, what kind of decoder 3 by 3 by so using 3 by how many combinations are possible 8 so I will I am I will be using a 3 by 8 decoder right so this is my decoder uh, that is being used at the instruction decoder mm, so let me highlight it because it's an important concept right so what I am having is a 3 by 8 decoder as my instruction decoder in this small example and what it will do for me is like uh, using 3 bit, uh, mm, let me take the inputs like I0, I1, I2 like that. So this is the LSB and MSB like that. Uh, and uh, some 8 outputs will be coming. And now the 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now each of this seven, 8 outputs, they actually corresponds to what? That is my question. In the previous example or the analogy, it was like a different departments. It's directed into different department. Now these things are not departments. These actually corresponds to different uh, different operations. Like you know, here the operation to be done is move. Here it is add. Hope you remember from the previous table. I think here it is subtract. Here it is multiply. Uh, right here it is division divide. And what was uh, what remains logarithm left shift right shift something I taken randomly this is for logarithm this is for left shift operation this is for right shift operation something like that so this add or addition will be done by whom uh, see uh, let me tell you that so in in our example so it is like uh, 
this is this corresponds to zero, one, two, like that, right? It is going. So when you are getting these three bits like this, what the uh, system will do? It will take these three bits are being fed to this. If that is the case, the most significant bit is like the zero, zero, one. And you know when you decode this is zero, zero, one corresponds to what? So you know something a table like this we we will use. So this is for um, what called a two by four decoder. So for zero zero, D zero will be active. Zero one, D one will be activated. One zero, like that. But in three bit, it is like a zero one zero. So that uh, output line two has to be activated, right? Zero one two. So this will be activated. So only this will be activated. So this is activated means this will be one. All other things will be zero. That means these things are not supposed to be done, right? Sorry, I, I made a mistake. It was zero zero one. Zero zero one is one, not two. So only this will be activated, and all others will be deactivated. So only this will uh, give me a one, right? So here there will be a one. In all these line there will be zero. So that is what is happening on the background when this kind of an input is coming. That's all. Now this circuit. So you know wh what is going to happen now is this will typically be connected to an adder. Add a circuit, so because I have to do the addition, right? So two inputs will be coming. So this is something called an enable, enable line. So typically we call it as an enable. A enable is there for a a every uh, combination circuit. We didn't explore it so far. We are going to see it right now. So what this enable is doing? Let me write it uh, clearly. So this will be for to a different circuit. And what is that circuit? This is my adder. Maybe that uh, n bit adder, right? The ripple carry adder. And here I have the enable pin, right? I enable pin is uh, typically something there in every combination circuit. Whenever you are giving uh, a signal to that, then that time only that particular circuit will be activated. That is the meaning. For the decoder also, you can add this enable. So far, we didn't explore uh, this enable, but we will see that. So here also, you can add this enable. And somebody will be controlling. Typically, who will control it? Maybe the control unit something. Because control unit is something supposed to generate the control signal, whether it is add, subtract, like that. So whenever the control unit enable the decoder, and that time only it will work. And that time it will take uh, that uh, 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 opcode bits, and it will decode accordingly. If this this is a case. I'm just taking an uh, uh, again an uh, uh, example. It's not the pure implementation. There are many many things missing. Things are there. Maybe in computer organization subject you will study that you will uh, fill all the gaps. You may feel it. I'm just try directly going to the application of the decoder. So that is why I'm telling you. So this will enable the adder circuit. And the adder circuit is now ready for addition. And which are all the inputs for the adder? This uh, content of R1 and R2. So that is there will be some other uh, decoder circuit will be there. Maybe as part of the instruction decoder itself one part will be doing this for you and another part uh, part will be decoding this part and this part and accordingly the content of register r1 and r2 will be the uh, will be taken into the adder so uh, all those things are internally connected and uh, this control unit will control them so so this is something that is working uh, very actively inside a cpu right so the whole thing that control signals the proper generation is something very much important for the proper working of that cpu as a hardware right so that about it okay for the time being this adder circuit is enabled and how these inputs are coming that is again you have to go in detail okay so that uh, register uh, is to be activated and from that what is the content that signal will come here come to this adder and it will add and the result will be stored there uh, maybe in r1 wherever it is so those things are something very very much detail in control computer organization you will study so anyway you got a feel of this decoder in this right so that is what is needed so this is one thing. Now let me tell you one more small uh, example for this um, and this decoder. Its application from the same uh, thing itself. So what I'm going to take is the last part. That is uh, here. You know, maybe first part or last part. Uh, okay, whatever it is. See. Uh, let's take this one itself the the first one so the move uh, instruction so here uh, what i need is like uh, to the register r1 i need the content of a and the memory location a is identified by 0 1 now this is something again um, s not being handled by the cpu so this is another thing now cpu is getting an instruction like a uh, 0, 0, 0 saying that um, say move instruction then 0 1 for uh, and 0 1 uh, uh, this zero one for the register. This is for mover, and this is for the register one. Right. This is for the memory location A. So, anyways, I'm just randomly picking uh, something like this. Yeah. Now you know uh, this is typically mean like for the towards the register R one. The mem content of the memory location A is to be fed. 
so that is what i want to do so what the cpu will do so cpu is getting this right so when cpu is getting this the cpu is a circuit which is having inside the cpu we have the register control unit adder everything is there but ram is something outside cpu so that that is the thing you have to understand see the cpu sitting sitting somewhere here just for your understanding i am writing so insert cpu so th this whole thing will happen inside cpu because this uh, instruction decoding instruction uh, accordingly addition everything because uh, we have a uh, instruction register inside the cpu instruction uh, decoder is there instruction decoder is there that will do the whole thing and arithmetic and logical unit is there where this uh, adder everything will reside then control unit is there like that many things are there right uh, let me denote the control unit here somewhere okay i'm just not uh, there are many things inside the cpu but this ram is something an outside co entity you know uh, in your machine and all this ram is uh, something separately placed right so um, how many locations are there in the ram so that is the next question the same example let's take uh, so we assume like the same same ram we can assume there are four location but uh, in typical ram you know 2gb ram like that we are having there are four location and the locations are identified by um, the address information like so this location is identified by 00, zero this is by zero 01 this is by 10 this is by 11 like that so this is my a one uh, zero this content i need in register one and b is like uh, um, 20 something i written and c is something I, I need the final answer so all those things are happened already now there is something very important that is sitting in between uh, these cpu and uh, ram or, or that is sitting somewhere near to the um, ram uh, and what is it it is our address decoder another another important decoder application i was confused where to draw this okay let me draw this here something like an address decoder in this example what kind of a decoder i will be using it is you know how many bits are my address just two bits the so same thing happened here also two bit ah here it is eight bit fine fine so now i have a so here i dependent on a three by eight decoder here this address is just two bits so using two bit how many addresses are possible four addresses right so it is a two by four decoder just example only right now you know inside the cpu there is something called a Mm, item addresses are there uh, we call it as a memory address register and memory buffer register anyway all those things are uh, somewhat deep detail uh, memory address register like that let me write so this uh, when the instruction decoder decode the instruction something like this this opcode part it will give to the instruction i mean that uh, part of the instruction decoder that will decode the opcode and it will understand that it is uh, move operation fine now what kind of move is to be done so from this memory location now it understood that uh, it's it's a memory location i have to take the data from the memory so this memory address register will will be st um, equipped with the, this memory lo location address now typically this memory address register will be connected with the, the main memory uh, using uh, something called uh, an address bus right this is uh, what we call as a address bus address bus address bus is something uh, carrying the address the actual address and you know in this example the address is like uh, uh, so here i need uh, mm, the uh, for the address decoder i need the input to zero and input to one okay input to one the most significant bit is like zero and the least significant bit is like uh, one so like that the address will come to the address decoder and for how many outputs will be there for the decoder so this is the first output that will be connected to the first location and this is the second output that will enable this location and this third output that will enable this and the fourth output that will enable this so this is how the address decoder is uh, connected with the ram and what it will do by and by taking this one zero you know correctly it will enable only what only it will enable enable and this is uh, zero 01 zero 01 means this this location so only this location will be enabled and all other locations will be disabled like this so only this location will be enabled and i know that uh, yeah i mean this particular content will be activated now so this content will be activated as a result of that this will be taken into uh, the uh, cpu so that is some other 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 things will happen now okay so just like uh, once that location is activated there is something called a data bus 
and that data bus, bus will take this data into CPU something like this through that data bus this uh, one zero will travel right it's again uh, two to um, bus I shown like that but typically a number of lines will be there and that will come to something called a uh, memory buffer register that is another register inside the CPU and where the data that 10 will be stored so this is a whole whole process but anyway I am not interested on uh, this data bus transition and all what I am interested is this address decoder part hope it is clear like whenever a um, uh, CPU is having some address with it some main memory address with it it will take that address and it will be given to contacting the main memory and now in the main memory there is something called an address decoder and the, that address decoder will take this binary uh, information and it will decode it and the correct memory location will be activated like what is highlighted and from that location the data will be taken in the last portion <laughs> the drawing I am not happy with that into the CPU like this right so th that is a, a secondary thing or if you want let me call it as the data bus now through this data bus this one zero will travel and it will reach the CPU so when it is reaching the CPU typically we have uh, another uh, uh, register that is memory da data register or memory buffer register will be there and where this data will be stored so this is actually 10 10 wh what I mean by 10 10 means the decimal 10 I mean here okay so in binary it will be something like 1010 10, okay and this 1010 10 will be stored here so that is what I mean but in other cases and all that this 0 1 everything I mean binary here I mean the decimal 10 and the decimal 20 okay if you have any doubt because you should not confuse it with the binary this is your decimal and this is also decimal number I mean okay so that in binary it is 1010 10 something so that will travel and it will receive memory data register or memory buffer register so you don't worry about the CPU internally that instruction register instruction decoder nothing anyway you will see all those in, uh, things in your computer organizations so that is a different subject you will study now what we are interested just for uh, giving you a very good example for decoder I, I thought of taking it but uh, still if you have any doubt you leave it everything and finally what is needed for us is decoder is something like this if I have a 2 by 4 decoder, 2 inputs will be there and 4 outputs will be there. So based on the 2 input, it will select activate one of the output lines. So that is the thing. Right. Now, um, something like if I have a uh, 3 by 8 decoder, 3 inputs will be there and 8 outputs will be there. Similarly, in general, I can think of what? I can think of a, uh, instead of this 3, I, uh, I can think of uh, something called uh, some n by this two, 8 is actually 2 power 3 2 power n decoder something like this typically we have and again this 2 power n must is not uh, must thing for me uh, so something like the typically if it is a bcd and all you know uh, using 4 bit some 4 if it is a bcd decoder uh, binary decoder decimal some 4 inputs will be coming and the uh, valid outputs are like from 0 to 9 only the remaining things are invalid and that time the output lines are like uh, uh, instead of 16 it will be 10 also so that is why n by 2 power n is 2 power n is maximum but we don't need it always what we need is something a value less than 2 power n so, right accordingly i can call it as a decoder is something i uh, n2 like n by m uh, line decoder is what we are having and what is this m m is a value that is less than or equal to 2 power n so in general we will see examples like n by 2 power n kind of decoder but uh, there are cases where this um, uh, just like a bcd decoder it will look like in bcd you know four bits are coming as input and when you decode it it should go from zero to so it is something like a four by ten decoder right it's not four by sixteen so like that um, uh, variations are there but in most of the cases it is like n by two power n two power n decoder or n by m decoder Decoder where m is a value less than 2 power n so this uh, hope this point is clear yeah so that's all hope these examples are clear for you it's a very very nice example like instruction decoder or address decoder these are all very very important in, in uh, any CPU design okay and this analogy also same thing uh, like the receptionist yeah this is the typical implementation of a um, what called a 3 by 8 decoder like uh, for 2 by 4 we saw just like that 3 by 8 is some 3 inputs this uh, 8 combinations of uh, are possible and uh, there are 8 output lines that is D0 to D7 
decoder output line like that it is written so the, in when all bits are zero d0 is activated uh, here d1 is activated d2 is activated like that see at any time only one bit is getting activated right now can you tell me what is this d0 so from the true table this is this a true table what is this d0 d0 is actually i mean uh, d0 is getting activated only in one case that is when x is 0 or x bar is 1 y bar is 1 and z bar is 1 something like this this is what so this particular so this is a min term corresponding to d0 so if you simplify also this d0 and this is one in only one this this one case right so d0 this is the whole expression for d0 similarly what is your uh, mid term expression for d1 d1 is actually uh, getting a value of 1 only in this case that is x bar y bar is it right so that's all that you can implement here right so this is your d0 d0 is your x bar y bar z bar and d1 is your x bar y bar z right so they just take x y z and uh, their negation and use the and gets properly you will get all the uh, d0 d1 d2 so this is the implementation of the decoder in uh, inside that circuit so uh, peripherally we saw it something like this some three bits are coming huh? you are getting some eight output line one of the output line will be activated how this activation is happening using this kind of a circuit on the background so this uh, any one of this AND gate will uh, output you one at any time, right? Based on what is the value of x, y, z. For example, if I am applying uh, something like, uh, so it is like x, y, z, right? 0, uh, 1, 0. You know that uh, 0, 1, 0. So, which will be activated? So, this will be activated, right? So, this will be 1. This will be 1. Mm, means what? Uh, I mean, uh, this is x bar is 1, y is 1 z bar is also 1 so that this will be activated this will be 1 but you know all other gates will answer you 0 why this is 0 because when you take x bar you will get 1 y bar is going to give you a 0 so at this point this will evaluate 0 similarly here x bar is 1 y bar is again 0 this will evaluate 0 here it is x bar is uh, 1 but y is 1 okay but z is 0 like that you know you, you can see all these things will be zero only this will be activated so this kind of a circuit is what uh, what is needed so this is how i can implement and this is a true table mm, now let me tell you one more thing quickly or uh, maybe in the next video so there is something called an enable so i i already told you like in this uh, circuit whether it is adder or uh, uh, decoder everywhere wherever you want you can add this enable and enable when you add it the meaning is like uh, oh, the, the whole circuit will be activated only when this enable input is one so that is the meaning of the enable so let me add and show you how this enable will so enable is another input i can add uh, add along with the whole, uh, all inputs so what it will do is like uh, whatever be the mm, inputs if the enable is zero the circuit is not going to give you any any reaction means the circuit is uh, simply going to let me use a different color right that will be interesting yeah mm, this concept of enable i'm simply explaining uh, let me take like this this is my enable input additionally so if this enable input is zero you know whatever be this x y and is a don't care i written right this whole thing will be zero because the circuit is inactive okay so to activate the circuit i need a value for uh, of one for the enable right something like this in that case uh, uh, this will happen accordingly now accordingly if i include enable something like this then uh, what is needed is like uh, this uh, min term one will corresponds to enable is one of the variable right so i have to add that also enable then x bar y bar z bar here also this one dot enable like that this enable also you have to take right that's what i mean and now in the uh, circuit also when you implement along with uh, all those things this enable input will also come this is your enable input and this enable input is to be connected with the all the gates so that also has to be one to uh, make it working right something like this you can continue this yeah that's all uh, like that you continue that is what i mean i'm not drawing it completely so this enable also you have to connect with all the gates right so that is the concept of enable okay fine now when i connect this enable like this this is something called a active high active high fully this uh, particular uh, decoder example is active high in the sense enable is getting activated when i am giving a high value to it 
right that is a meaning active high when whenever the enable is having a value one that circuit as a whole is activated the circuit is activated when i am getting enable is equal to one so that is a meaning so in this circuit um, active state means high that, that is a thing similarly here when i am applying like a zero 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 one this d1 is one so this one is actually activating this one this particular output line a zero is deactivating everything so whole thing active high circuit means high is activating something i mean it may be active high enable active high enable means the whole circuit is activated by a high value that is one for the enable pin right that is uh, something called a active high circuit let me write like that so it, it can be decoder circuit in any other circuit the circuit is activated activated when enable is equal to one so that is the meaning of an active high circuit and similarly we have another thing called a active low circuit active low circuit active low circuit means what circuit activated when enable is equal to just opposite zero so active low low is activating the circuit so in that case here you have to connect a, a not gate and that negation of it you have to connect to uh, all and gates similarly here this will turn like a one will be inactive state uh, enable is equal to zero is activating it so some bar will come here okay so it's clear right so that that about it similarly in the output line also here you can see this is active high this is one is activating that particular output line and sometimes you can think of active low output also and that time d0 uh, you want you can activate this d0 by making this zero and all other output line one that also fine so that you can see something like this so this is a different implementation of a decoder the same 2 by 4 decoder but now it is Mm, with the enable input uh, itself but uh, the whole thing this is the, here you can see an active low circuit active low circuit means the circuit is getting activated for a zero value for the enable so what i done is whenever i am giving a zero for the enable this not gate will give a one and that one is connected with all the and gates so the and gates will be uh, i mean it's not and they are nand gates actually but anyway nand is negation of and right so uh, and operation will happen on the background then it will take the negation of the out, uh, output that's all so anyway uh, right so uh, that is what is happening so a zero is activating the circuit it's uh, so whenever i am getting giving a zero for the enable its negation one will activate the ender thing okay fine that's all so uh, now it will look like the enable has to be one um don't care whether you are applying um x uh, a, 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 any value for the zero or one for a the whole thing will be inactive but when enable is equal to zero the circuit is active so that is the meaning enable is equal to zero circuit is active okay fine that is one thing and also the output also they made it active low uh, what i mean is like uh, you know zero zero corresponds to this d zero is active right so here it is active low means active low means this d zero is zero and all other things are one i mean low value is activating the output so to activate d zero i need a low value for it okay similarly here this corresponds to uh zero one zero one means d1 is to be activated how can i activate d1 by giving a value of zero that is low for d1 and uh, i can deactivate other outputs by giving a value of one actually on the background uh, so this is the true table but on the background how i am achieving it the normal uh, two by four decoder only but uh, to the output of the normal decoder i am using a not gate additionally right because uh, right this not gate is actually giving the uh, opposite thing right so just like uh, previously we used and gate right so when you used and gate here you get a one and all in all these cases you get a zero but you use a not gate also in addition to this right when you convert this and to a nand gate this negation will make this one zero and all other zeros to one so this kind of an implementation is also there but uh, it's not that much popular the other one is something by default so this is something you if some if in the exam they are asking you explain the t2 by 4 
active low decoder 2 by 4 line active low decoder with the active low enable input something like that so if they are mentioning the term active low you can explain like that otherwise the other implementation is fine so what we concluded is so we have the active high as well as active low variation of any combination circuit this is not only for decoder uh, in adder and all everywhere wherever you want to add this enable you can add that as an additional input and you can activate the circuit for a value of um, I mean, um, whenever this enable is coming, some kind of hand operation should be done with along with every output, this enable will also to be added, added, right. So, that is what is happening. So, it can be active high or active low, clear, right. Similarly, the output of the decoder, uh, you can use this active high concept or active low concept, both are there. Yeah, maybe uh, this is a bigger video, but many things we covered and more examples of this decoder and all we will see in the subsequent part. Yeah, thanks for watching.